Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today hopefully will be a quick one. Um, we're actually just showing twisted pair wire how we created this and the difference between 2D which you see on the right and a 3D spline on the left. How they're treated. Let's go ahead and create this. I've already uh, pull those across and you'll see what happens here. I'm not going to dimension any more than this. I just needed a particular size. And the reason is it, when you do the, the spline here, you can grab parts and move it around because of the control handles. The, the effect of this is you're able to get around corners, do things a lot tighter, a little nicer and cleaner. And in 3D, when you're just doing the 2D, you're stuck. That's all you see is all you get. It's one plane. And if I needed to change the size of this, I would have to put a dimension on it and go through the entire process, basically make it fully constrained. But right now we only have, because you can tell the two different colors, this is fully constrained. This is not. So let's go ahead and um, create this. We'll show you how we actually did this. On the ends of these, we would have to start so we can get our profile, add this. You pick once and then again on the same end and that creates your, your uh, profile uh, surface that you need to draw on. So let's go ahead and do a 2D sketch. I'll show you how we did this. I've already made the block, but I'll show you how we actually created this. So on the side, let me zoom in here a little bit. I'm going to do 125 because I already know the size. I've done this and I'm just going to make the other ones finish that since I have one I can hit equals and they're all done so for this I want to actually align these these should already be straight that one's not there we go and then I'm going to do the vertical It's kind of important to have these set up properly because it will make the wires go completely wonky. Now let's, we'll just tangent these together. Oh, I guess I'm already there. And because of the alignment, okay, silly me. All right, let's go ahead and put a line here because we want to have a center point. I'm going to make this into a reference or construction, either one. And that's what we need to do for that. So I was going to place this. Now, what I would normally do is make a block out of this so it's consistent uh, that I can pull it into any, which I have already done. So if I select all this, go up here, you'll see create block, which is a regular 2D block. Um, it's called W for wire. We already have it selected, so that's grayed out. Your insertion point, which would be there, and you would say, okay, so now this can not be adjusted unless you double click on it, go into it, change the size, uh, but we don't need to do that. So we're going to say finish. So that is the block. So for here, I pick this, go down to our point, say, okay, let's turn off our datum. And that is set, ready to go. I'll show you how we do the other. Now we're going to say okay to this and then we're going to need that plane for our other sketch. Now this will be a little different when you you'll see what happens to the plane when we attach it. So we're going to do the same thing. Pick once, pick again and that's there's our plane. It's angled because of the way this is twisted. Now if this is flat it would be the same as this but it's not a big deal for what we're doing here. The only difference on this, I need, if I'm going to do um, a, the 2D or a block attached to this, I need to do a few more things. So let's go ahead and start our sketch. And this is where uh, it's a little different than the other. You have to do a projection of that point on the sketch to have an insertion point. Otherwise, it's just there's no way you're going to attach it. Now, since I've already made the block, 
I can go up to blocks. I could drag this out. It's exactly the other one. Well, I actually have two. I made my original one, which is four twisted cable, and then the W, which we made in the other. Same thing, I just wanted to show you how I did that. So you're gonna do point here and here. That would not go there. You could not attach it without doing that projection. That's the only difference between these two. So let's go ahead and turn off this. And let's go ahead and finish that. So now we have our two cable sets set up. Let's go ahead and we're gonna go up to Model, Sweep. Here is our Sweep dialog. We're gonna pick just one at a time. And I've chosen 1800 because if you do, a lot of people will do this the first time and they'll put in like five and they're thinking it's gonna twist around it five times. It really doesn't calculate it that way. So I put 1800 and you'll see what it actually looks like. So you pick the profile, you pick our line, and there we go. That's 1800, you can really twist it up a lot. Um, but depending on your curves and your radiuses, if you go too much, it, doesn't look right, doesn't look natural. I want to stay in the command, so we're going to pick plus. Go to the next one. Got to pick our path. Let's do it again. Next one. Pick our path. Now let's get our last one on this particular one, path. You would think that it actually would jump to the other, but it doesn't. Say OK to that. Okay, that's our 2D layout. Let's do the 3D. So we're gonna do the same thing, sweep. Gonna pick one, path. And now here's a weird thing, this happens sometimes. I'm over here, depending on where you are on this, it doesn't grab it every time, so it doesn't matter. Pick wherever it selects it, good enough. Let's do the next one. It's like, here you go again. I'm selecting this, but it's just being fickled, and who knows why it happens. I could have sworn that was picked. Okay, next. I guess that was user error. There we go. Pick. Make sure that is selected. There we go. And that, that's it. Okay, now you will clearly see here is a seam, no seam. These are one, two, three, four segments. This is one segment. And I can still manipulate this if I go into the uh, 3D sketch. Well, you can do with the 2D as well. It's just you have to do the constraints and the sizes and all the other dimensions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'll show you one other weird thing about this. If we color one of these, if I pick color and I pick on this, you will notice it's only taking one segment. So let's make this one just red. If I hold down the shift key, you would normally do this, but it's already selected. I'm already to that point, so I have to hit the plus sign. So if I pick on it, now you still have the bucket. If I hit shift, I can go through the rest of this. I get a little lost on the twist, so I'm doing it like this. Okay. And let's go ahead and finish that. So there's a difference on that. It's a little weird. Plus, it does not take the end. You would have to do the same thing. You pick on it, your sele selection color, and then pick the end to finish that on both ends actually, be the same thing. Have to hold your shift key to be able to get it to take that. Here's a difference, and you're twisted since it is one spline. If I do color here, I'm gonna pick this one. You see it's selected the entire piece. And that's one of the main difference between this. I'm not gonna go through the rest of the colors, obviously you see how to do that, but you get the point how to create your twisted pair, very easy. Um, and use a block so you can use it over and over and over. So if you're doing a complicated layout and you have, I prefer 3D splines to lay it out and you're using the same wire, just add your uh, insertion points at the end of it with your datums and go ahead and 
um, slap in the, the block so it's the same size and you don't have to redraw it every single time. I hope this was helpful. Uh, we'll see you in the next video and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much.